Welcome back. This is the second episode of the Project M235 miniseries, so if you didn't already see the first episode, you should probably go watch that first. The tune I use is a VF Engineering Hex tune. Since I'm um, doing dino runs after every mod, I paid for stage two, but then asked them to also send me the file for stage one tune, and they obliged. So I flashed the car with stage one, and the difference was immediate. The single biggest butt dino gain I've ever felt from any mod on any car that I've owned, and I've owned a lot. So, um, the dino graph should be really telling. We had the same issues with downshifting again, and I confirmed this time he was using the right settings. So it's an issue with the car being on the dyno and the front wheel's not spinning. So the car, you know, the car thinks the rear tires are burning out or whatever. The good news is after I got home today, I read more online and then I figured out how to get the car into roller dyno mode. And then I went to the garage and tried it and it does work. So that means after we do the downpipe and then we go dyno the car again, I'll be able to get it into dyno mode and then he'll be able to just flat foot it from the start and then we can get a really good dyno reading hopefully. Um, the temperature is about 25 degrees warmer today than the last time, so just keep that in mind. It was 60 degrees today. The power gain on the best pull is 44 horsepower. That's huge for just a flash tune. They advertise 35 to 40, but I think me running 93 octane might explain that extra 5 horsepower. The torque still wasn't reading correctly, but you know, it's due to the whole downshifting issue, and then he's having to roll into the throttle, and the lower ends where the engine actually makes the most torque, so. Um, he did have one run though where he was able to get onto it early without it kicking down a gear So on that run as you can see it had 405 pound-feet. That's awesome But since the baseline is 30 pound-feet lower We'll just stick to the 380 pound-feet run since it'll more accurately represent the actual gain um, it Just means we care more about the increase not the actual number We know it really did 405 pound-feet, but since our baseline we didn't actually get a run like that um, The torque curve in the baseline was about 20 pound-feet lower than it probably should have read so we'll use a lower one um, from this run and it'll give us some more apples to apples comparison between baseline and stage one. But the peak power isn't even the most astonishing thing. The area under the curve is. Your peak power can be higher and your car can actually still be slower in some cases because, you know, with a bad tune, you might actually make less power everywhere else in the graph, but still have a higher peak increase. In this case, you can see it gained and crossed the entire rev band. It's freaking awesome. I did a crappy Photoshop job just to kind of fill in the area between the two curves so you can visualize the gain but check out that gain, that's awesome. It's wild for just a $600 flash tune. Um, really, it's hard to get that sort of gain for any kind of money. But let's see what the zero to 16 quarter mile improvements are now to see how the increase in power translates to actual real world acceleration. Just a disclaimer though, the dyno was done today and it was 60 degrees out. The acceleration runs I did earlier this week and it was 25 degrees out when I did those. As you can see, my first attempt really shows the power and torque improvement. It just blew off first gear and then immediately shifted in the second too early. Finally, I got a good result. Wheel spin is controlled, but I think a better time could be achieved with warmer weather where the tires can actually grip. 4.19 seconds is damn good though for rear drive, especially on skinnier winter tires on a 25 degree day. Um, imagine this would potentially break into the high threes with good warm summer tires on a cool spring day, but it's a good improvement, but traction kind of starts to limit a zero to 60 run. So I think quarter mile will really show us where the gains are better. Impressive. 12.65 is pretty solid for a bone sock car other than an ECU flash tune. You can see due to the traction, the 60 foot time is pretty much identical from baseline, but the elapsed time and the trap speeds are definitely a lot better. The 7 mile an hour trap speed increase over baseline really shows the huge power increase. Um, the elapsed time is technically, what, 0.5 seconds improvement, but I think the car is actually capable of a 13 flat bone stock, so I think the improvement's closer to like 3.5 tenths. Still a good improvement. I think on wider summer tires on a spring day with a good DA and a perfect launch, it might be able to do 12.5 or lower. 
But anyway, can't complain. It's a solid improvement for a $600 mod that you can do with a laptop in about 20 minutes of your time. In the next episode, we'll get the downpipe installed as well as the beefier diverter valve and the charge pipes. And then we'll rinse and repeat the whole dyno and acceleration runs thing and then see what we gain going to stage two. Also, I forgot to mention in the first episode what Draggy is. Draggy is a cheaper, smaller, lighter, and arguably better competitor to VBox. You can pick them up for about 150 bucks on Amazon and there's a companion app you can get for your smartphone to pull the results off with. Um, it's really incredibly useful for, you know, being fairly affordable. And I'll put a link in the description to it on Amazon so you can check it out. But hope you enjoyed the video. I'm super excited to see what stage two can do, you know, when you upgrade the breathing for the turbo with a 200 cell downpipe. Um, I have to find time to install it though, and then call and schedule the dyno. So it might be a couple weeks before I get to the third episode, but maybe not. Best case scenario, it'll be a week. But see you in the next one.